What is up? Rad Potential YouTube channel, welcome to today's video. As you can see behind me, the shop is empty. You might wonder, well what are we gonna work on? Well, I gotta get the silver car out so I can put the wide band O2 sensor in it. And then I'm gonna go ideally, probably not tonight, it'll probably be this weekend, maybe drive it around, see what the carburetor's doing, maybe tune on it a little bit, and then uh do that. But I do want to dig it out and get the O2 sensor on it. The other thing we're gonna in this video, do in this video is Look at the oil leak on my FC and uh, get it buttoned up because I sold it and the guy's coming to get it or it's leaving this weekend. Letty! No, too far. Come on. Come here. Hey, come here. Dog trying to run down the road. Can't be doing that. But. What I do want to show you guys really quick, um, which is why like I haven't done a ton of video stuff this week, is because I've been working on my house and fixing things around the house because um, we're having a little get together this weekend and I just really need to get some stuff fixed. So feel free to drop your input if you are engineering minded or like or civ engineering, civil engineering minded or like just house, homie, whatever. Basically, I'm putting a roof over this, right? I had to get water that's coming from down this big hill behind me. There's like a ravine right through here. And I had to get that water from basically around this wall or under the wall or not over the wall because water coming over walls is not good. Waterfalls, not ideal when you're like trying to have a parking area here. As you can see, it's been pretty green and, and moldy back here. So what did I do? Well, I'm a civil engineer, but that's my job. So I, I deal with this stuff, but I didn't put this in. This was already here when I got here. So. I took an 18 inch pipe right there and I'll show it to you from the top here in a second but I took an 18 inch pipe laid it flat I cut a hole in it I've got two four inch pipes stacked vertically on the end of there um, I'll insert some pictures of, of me putting all this together the four inch pipes come through here you can kind of see them you know poking through just because I don't have a lot of cover through here because I can't really like dig this out and there's support beams and a whole bunch of stuff going on so, four inch pipes come through. I got two little clean outs here. They run under these rocks, down in here, through the wall, and it comes out right here. So, the beauty of having all this stuff, and this is where, you know, science, this is, this is key. You know that a hose under pressure flows a lot of water, right, out of that hose, respectively to the diameter of the hose. Now, if you look at a culvert that goes under your driveway, you'll never see a culvert flow full on the outlet because the water coming in, it goes down as it goes out, so you don't get the full capacity. So what this system right here does, basically my reservoir with the pipes, as the water comes down, <coughs> it fills the reservoir up and that pressure loads that four inch pipe. So in a big rainstorm, I have like almost pretty much full pipe flow coming out of my four inch pipes. So if you've ever seen a four inch pipe flow full of water, that's a lot of water. So, now that this is fixed, I can address this part. So you see my chains. Basically this wall, because the roof drains right into it, as you can see the line there, um, had gotten full of water behind it and it pushed the wall out. So I was able to get it pretty dang good. Um, you can see here it still has a little bit of bow out. Um, but, this is way better than it was. I anchored it to the building and I'm gonna get ready to here today. I'm gonna backfill this and then put rock in there and then I'm, eventually I'm gonna concrete that probably in the next couple weeks. So that's why I, I say cars haven't been getting done but I really have been working on those cars a lot and getting this stuff done too. So this week has just been more house focused. But kind of wanted to intro this video like that. There's not going to be too crazy cool car content in here. I am going to fire the silver car up, get that O2 sensor installed, and maybe go for a little rip here this evening. Um, so let's kind of get cracking to that. The other thing, um, if you go way back on the channel, I've been doing, I've been riding mountain bikes here for a while, and I've got these jumps built. Um, they're super fun to ride, and I'm kind of overhauling some stuff and changing this. So if you guys are interested in seeing some mountain bike jump videos, please. Uh, please drop a comment below if you want me to do like some filming with this stuff. I normally don't just because like it's kind of me getting away from the camera and most of my filming is just cars but yeah that's that. The real goal for this area uh, I'm going to concrete this and put a lift out here under this roof so I have a lift which will be dope. So for now I'm going to get to backfilling this wall real quick while I got daylight 
and uh, get the silver card dug out, get some dinner ate, and uh, you guys will be seeing this video in the morning. So, let's get to it. Oh, so, sorry about my super bright light. Um, well, we got a little sidetracked, started working on the Jeep because it had to move it out of the way. And I was like, well, if I'm going to fire it up and move it out of the way, might as well address my issue I've been having with it. Basically, what's been happening is um, the voltage just spikes up and down and from the alternator. So, like, it, like, for example, it was running, charging 14 volts, and then it would go down to, like, 11.8 and then it would go back up to 14 then it would go back down to 11.8 then it go back up to 14 then it go back down to 11.8 so and it was corresponding to whenever the ac would kick on and the extra fan kicked on so my thoughts were like all right let's check the battery terminals check the connection at the alternator etc so i turned that off and then it held constant so i was like okay probably bad ground so then i get to looking and hopefully you all can see down in here when I drove this to Arkansas last year, the coil crapped out on me on the way to Arkansas. So, had it replaced at a shop. Look at what wasn't hooked up. That right there is ground. And that ground isn't hooked up. So, I'm betting I'm going to put that back on. I'm going to clean the battery terminals and clean this chassis ground here. And then I think there's another ground on this side of the engine that just goes to the chassis. I'm going to pull that one off and clean it real quick, and then we're going to fire this thing back up and see if it's being weird. And if it's fixed, then we're then we're ripping. Then we got the daily back, and I don't have to keep driving my truck. I just haven't been able, and I hope that all of that wasn't washed out with my bright light, haven't been able to drive this as the daily because it's been acting up, and I've been working on other people's junk, so I haven't been able to work on my own junk, which is good stuff. So I'm going to fix this real quick. Then we'll get the silver car in here. As you can see, it's dark. And then we'll get the vert out maybe, or I'll do the vert tomorrow. I don't know. Whatever. Just need to get stuff done. I have too much stuff. So as long as I'm crossing boxes off, we're good. Ladies and gentlemen, we have fixed it. Wait for it. Go back up. Wait for it. So, what was happening is the belt was loose so that whenever, basically when the AC kicked on, it put enough tension on the belt that it could slip on the alternator because I was also putting, was also putting a load on the alternator, so thus not driving the alternator fast enough. And I saw it while I was putting that ground back on that it was a little loose and I could feel it and it was like working around on one of the tensioners. So I tightened it up because this doesn't have a spring loaded tensioner and now we're golden. Back on daily duty. Still got to drive the truck to Chattanooga tomorrow because I'm picking up a grill, but that's okay. Next project. All right. First start in a while. Come on. She's a ripper. Smells wonderful. All right, O2 sensor time. So I think it's inside in the convertible still, just sitting on the back. Um, but let me go grab it and I'll show you what we're working with. All right, folks, here's what we're working with. So Innovate sells this super cool, like handheld wideband O2 sensor. So one thing that um, 
just like I've always found amusing is like putting a permanent wide window two sensor in your car. Um, now like I get it, it's a great fail safe. You can see if it runs lean. You can see if it does funky stuff like that. But for like example, a carbureted, whatever, whatever. If it starts running weird, it's gonna just run weird, you know. Um, to me, oil pressure, temperature is more important. So I've always like, and even in my FC, this was the wide band I had. This is what I used to tune it. This is what you do use to tune those. When you get it running good, you take it off. And you don't have ugly gauges in your dash. So how this works? Cigarette lighter plug, lead for your O2 sensor. So it's probably really close, close to you, but yeah. It takes a standard Bosch O2 sensor. These things are kind of expensive, um, but they work really good and they actually last pretty decent in these rotaries. So I only had one sensor in the vert for the entirety of the like two and a half years it was in A. And then I replaced it whenever I went turbo just because I wanted to replace it. This one, I'm just gonna use the same one I had in it when I was turbo. I'm gonna put it in this, see how she does. So to show you the exhaust setup on this car, if you don't really know, um, this is all built by me. So we've got a racing beat, dual primary header, into a wide pipe right here. And then the wide pipe goes two and a half all the way back over the axle. I guess, let me turn my light on. So there you go. So racing beat, split primary header, wide pipe. This is um, the little thing for like if you have a six port block, you can put this on it and hook this up to the, uh, the fifth and sixth ports. And then this runs all the way out to a, basically just a bullet muffler at the end. It's a five inch outer diameter, two and a half inch inner diameter. When I first put this car together, I had this muffler. As you can see, it was loud. So we replaced it with one little quieter. But I got two bungs for O2 sensors um, right after the collector, and that's where I'm gonna stick this. So go ahead and stick this in. I'll get it ran up through, I usually run it up through the shifter hole um, the O2 sensor lead, just run it up through the shif shifter hole, zip tie it to the trans and like away. This one I may have to, this one I may bring up through the engine bay, if at all possible, but that big, that plug is super big, so I may not be able to fit it um, through my firewall anywhere. So, hence why the shifter hole works good, because you just run it in there and let it eat for a while and then take it back out. So, and at, at a minimum what I can do is just run this up through the window, drive it around, see what it's doing, adjust the jets, swap the jets, drive it around, see what it's doing again. Easy peasy. All right, y'all, so, key on. Innovate's gonna power up. Should already be good and calibrated. We're gonna go ahead and fire this baby up. So basically the O2 sensor's gotta heat up right now, that's the weight. Alright guys, so, car's running a little lean on tipping, I'll have to uh, do some research, figure out what I need to change, what I need to order, um, and uh, kind of go from there as far as jetting 
and see what's up, see what other Weber people do and, and kind of do. There's a bunch of stuff on the OS Rotary uh, forum, so I'm going to go read some of that here tonight. Get me some new jets ordered, but for now, it's in. It's good. We're going to see how, uh, how the changes affect it, and I'll document that stuff on here. So I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Keep it rad.